So, welcome to the lecture series on nonlinear programming. In the last class, we have seen what convex sets are and what are their properties, and also we have seen what convex functions are, and we have also seen some examples on convex functions. In this uh, lecture, we will see some properties of convex functions. So, uh, let us discuss. So, what convex functions are? Uh, con uh, function f is set a uh, function f from a convex set to r is said to be convex if f of lambda x 1 plus 1 minus lambda x 2 is less than or equals to lambda f x 1 plus 1 minus lambda f x 2. And this should hold for all x 1 x 2 in S and for all lambda between 0 and 1. So, this is how we can define convex function. Now, let us discuss some uh, examples how to prove mathematically that a function f is convex. Geometrically, we have already seen that what convex functions geometrically represent, but how can we show that a function f is convex mathematically. So, let us uh, discuss few examples based on this. Suppose function is from r to r and f is suppose mod x. So, we have seen uh, uh, graphically that mod x is a, a convex function. Okay. How can we prove this? So, you take two arbitrary points x 1 and x 2 in R, here s is R, if for this example s equal to R. Okay. So, uh, what is f of lambda x 1 plus 1 minus lambda x 2? So, this will be equals to by this definition is lambda mod of lambda f x 1 plus 1 minus lambda x 2, okay. lambda between 0 and 1. Now, this is less than or equals to lambda mod lambda x 1 plus mod of 1 minus lambda x 2, because mod of a 1 plus b 1 is less than or equals to mod of a 1 plus mod of b 1. Okay. Now, this lambda is a non-negative uh, value, so it can be taken out from the modulus. Again, 1 minus lambda is also non-negative because lambda is between 0 and 1. So, this also can be taken out. Now, mod of x 1 is nothing but f x 1 and this is f x 2. So, we have shown that f of lambda x 1 plus 1 minus lambda x 2 is less than or equal to lambda f x 1 plus 1 minus lambda f x 2. So, that is how we can show that mod x is a convex function. So, we see some more example based on this. Suppose a uh, very simple example, suppose f x equals to uh, 3 x plus 4 and we have to show that it is a convex function. So, again you take lambda x 1 plus 1 minus lambda x 2 for any x 1 x 2 in R and lambda between 0 and 1. So, this is equals to 3 times you apply this definition lambda x 1 plus 1 minus lambda x 2 plus 4 for lambda between 0 and 1. And for any x1, x2 in S, S is R here. This is further equal to 3 lambda x1 plus 3 times 1 minus lambda x2. Now, this 4 can be written as 4 lambda plus 4 into 1 minus lambda. The sum is this sum is 4. Okay. So, now this can be written as lambda times 3 x 1 plus 4, you club these two terms and club these two terms. Okay. So, this is plus 1 minus lambda you can take out, this is 3 x 2 plus 4. Now, this is nothing but lambda of f x 1, f x 1 is 3 x 1 plus 4 and this is 1 minus lambda of f x 2. So, we have shown that f of lambda x 1 plus 1 minus lambda x 2 
is equal to lambda f x 1 plus 1 minus lambda f x 2 that is equality holds. So, equality holds that means function is convex. Okay. Now, suppose uh, you have to show that f x equal to x square, you have to show that this is a convex function. Again, we can apply the same definition f of lambda x 1 plus 1 minus lambda x 2, it is lambda x 1 plus 1 minus lambda x 2 whole square because f x equal to x square, this is equal to lambda square x 1 square plus 1 minus lambda whole square x 2 square plus 2 lambda 1 minus lambda x 1 x 2. Okay. Now, now to solve it further, uh, we know that uh, for any x 1 x 2, x 1 minus x 2 whole square is always greater than equal to 0 for all x 1 x 2. Okay. So, using this inequality, we can obtain that x 1 square plus x 2 square is greater or equal to 2 x 1 x 2. So, this 2 x 1 x 2 can be written less than equals to x 1 square plus x 2 square. So, this is less than equals to lambda square x 1 square plus 1 minus lambda whole square x 2 square plus inequality will not change because these quantities are non negative. So, this is equal to x 1 square times lambda square plus lambda minus lambda square and x 2 square times 1 plus lambda square minus 2 lambda plus lambda minus lambda square. So, this cancel out and this cancels out. So, this is nothing but lambda x 1 square plus 1 minus lambda x 2 square or it is equals to lambda f x 1 plus 1 minus lambda f x 2. So, this is how we can we can easily say that f of lambda x 1 plus 1 minus lambda x 2 is less than or equals to lambda f x 1 plus 1 minus lambda x 2 f x 2. So, uh, in this way we can show that a function f is a convex function I mean x square is a convex function. Now, suppose you have to show that uh, f is a concave function some function like uh, minus x square is a concave function. So, in the same lines in the same lines we can show that minus f I mean minus x square is a concave function. Okay. Now, what are properties of convex function? The first property is if f and g two convex functions defined over a convex set S, then the sum is also convex. Alpha times f where alpha is a non-negative scalar is also convex and maximum of two convex function is also convex. So, let us try to prove the first one uh, f plus g. So, then to show that f plus g is a convex function, we have to show this definition. Okay. So, you take uh, you take h as f plus g. So, h of lambda x 1 plus 1 minus lambda x 2, we have to show that this is less than equals to lambda h x 1 plus 1 minus lambda h x 2. Okay. So, this is equal to f plus g of lambda x 1 plus 1 minus lambda x 2, because h is nothing but f plus g. And it is again equal to f of lambda x 1 plus 1 minus lambda x 2 plus g of lambda x 1 plus 1 minus lambda x 2. Now, f and g both are convex, it is given to us. So, since both are convex, so by the definition, these are less than or equals to lambda f x 1 plus 1 minus lambda f x 2 plus lambda g x 1 plus 1 minus lambda g x 2 and this is equal to lambda times f plus g of x 1 plus 1 minus lambda times 
f plus g of x 2 and this is nothing but lambda h of x 1 plus 1 minus lambda h of x 2. So, we have shown that h of lambda x 1 plus 1 minus lambda x 2 is less than or equals to lambda h x 1 plus 1 minus lambda h x 2. This means h is a convex function and h is nothing but sum of f and g. So, sum of two convex function is also convex. Uh, similarly, we can show that alpha times f is also a convex function. Now, to show that maximum of two convex functions are also convex, this we will discuss while we will discuss epigraph of these convex functions in our next class. Now, if we have suppose f1, f2, f3 up to fk, suppose we have k convex function defined on a convex set x, then the linear combination of these convex function is also convex. Okay. This can be proved very easily using the same concept. Okay. Next property is a convex function need not be continuous. Suppose you have this example. From minus 1 to plus 1, it is x square. Suppose minus 1, it is plus 1, it is x square. This is and at 1 at 1 it is 2. So, this is 1 and at 1 it this value is 2. Okay. Okay. Clearly, this function is not continuous at x equal to 1. However, the function is convex because if you take any two arbitrary points and join the line segment even with this point. So, the chord is always above the curve. So, a convex function need not be continuous. The next property is a convex function need not be differentiable. So, of course, if it is not continuous, so if it, it, it will not be differentiable. And another example is mod x. Mod x is not differentiable at x equal to 0. However, we have seen that mod x is convex function. Okay. The next very important property of convex function and let f be a convex function on a convex set S subset of Rn, then every local minimum of f on S is global minimum. So, uh, what does it mean and how we prove it? Let us see. So, if the function is convex and you have find a local minimum on a on a convex set S, then it will be global by this property. Okay. So, what do you mean by local minimum? Local minimum means uh, that uh, uh, suppose x bar is a local minimum. Okay. So, what does it mean? It means that uh, f x bar will be less than or equals to f x for some neighborhood of x bar. You take a neighborhood of x bar. So, it is uh, for all x belongs to delta neighborhood of x bar uh, for some delta greater than 0. This, this is local minimum uh, that means you take a neighborhood of you take a neighborhood of that point of x bar uh, no matter how small delta is if there exists some delta neighborhood of uh, x bar such that for all x belongs to the delta neighborhood of x bar, f x bar is less than equals to f x, this means x bar is a local minimum. And global minimum means uh, x bar is global minimum, this means this means f x bar is less than equals to f x for all x in s. For all x in the convex set s, f x bar is less than or equals to f x. If this holds, then we say that x bar is the uh, point of global minimum. Okay. Now, how we will show that if function is convex, then every local minimum is global. So, suppose x bar 
let x bar be a point of local meaning. Local minimum of f on s. Okay. Okay. And uh, suppose x bar is not global minimum. So, if x bar is not global minimum, this means uh, this implies that there will exist some uh, x cap belongs to s such that such that f x cap will be less than f x bar. Okay. Because x because x bar is not global minimum is not global minimum means uh, it this inequality is not holding for every s. This means there will exist some x in s so, uh, which is x cap such that f x cap such that the value of function have smaller value than function of f at x bar. Okay. And x, x bar is also local minimum. Uh, so, therefore, x bar is local minimum also. So, this means this means f x bar is less than equals to f x for all uh, x belongs to delta neighborhood of x bar and this delta neighborhood must be in s also. So, intersection with s okay, for some delta greater than 0. Okay. Now, anyhow we have to uh, establish a contradiction then only we can say that x, x bar is nothing but global minimum also. Okay. So, take a convex linear combination of uh, take a convex linear combination of uh, x cap and x bar okay. take a convex linear combination of these two points. Now, uh, now this is this is the convex set S okay, which is given to us. Okay. This is some x bar in s and this is some x cap in s and these these are x you vary lambda you will get different x. Okay. For lambda equal to half you will get a midpoint for lambda equal to uh, 1 by 3 you will get another point in between x bar and x cap. Now, this is this is some delta neighborhood of x bar. Okay. This is some delta neighborhood of x bar of radius delta. Okay, of radius delta. So there will always uh, exist some uh, uh, some uh, x uh, which is in uh, delta neighborhood of x bar. You see, if you vary lambda, if you vary lambda, you will get different x, and all are in between x bar and x cap. So there will be some lambda. There will be some lambda, no matter how small it may be there will be some lambda such that that x will belongs to delta neighborhood of x bar also. Okay. So, uh, of course, uh, there will exist some lambda uh, bit, uh, some lambda belongs to 0 and 1 okay, such that this uh, x uh, x uh, I mean uh, this suppose this is the x tilde this x tilde will belongs to delta neighborhood of x bar intersection s no matter how small this lambda is. Okay. So, uh, now, now you take uh, <coughs> you apply the convexity of f also. So, f of x tilde which is nothing but f of lambda x bar plus 1 minus lambda x cap is less than or equals to lambda f x bar plus 1 minus lambda f x f x cap because function is convex it is given to us and f x cap is strictly less than f x bar. So, this is strictly less than lambda f x bar plus 1 minus lambda 1 minus lambda uh, f x bar 
oh f x cap ok yeah take ok. So, this is equal to f x bar. So, this implies f x cap is strictly less than f x bar ok. This implies <coughs> now this this x cap ok x delta yeah this is x delta ok this is x delta. So, this f x f uh, this f x delta is strictly less than f x bar and but from this this must be less than equals to f x for every x in uh, delta neighborhood of x bar and this x cap this x delta is in delta neighborhood and it is in delta neighborhood such that this inequality hold which contradicts this uh, definition of local minimum ok which this contradicts 2 suppose this is 2. So, this contradicts 2. So, this implies this implies x bar is global minimum of f ok. So, uh, hence we can say that whenever we are solving any optimization problem where f is a uh, minimizing type function and is convex then if you find any local minimum of f it will also be global. So, this is a very uh, peculiar property of convex functions ok. Now, next is epigraph of a convex function what is an epigraph let us see. So, suppose this is s is a convex set then the epigraph of function f is given by this definition. So, what does it mean let us see. So, epigraph of a convex function is nothing but all x alpha such that x belongs to uh, s alpha belongs to r and f x is less than or equals to alpha ok. And definitely because x is an r n and this is an r. So, this uh, tuple will be in r n plus 1. So, it will be a subset of r n plus 1 because this is in r n and this is in r. So, this tuple will be in r n plus 1. So, it will be a subset of r n plus 1. So, let us understand this definition. Suppose you have this function say y equal to f x. Now, suppose you take this alpha ok y equal to alpha and uh, this is some x 1 and this is some x 2. So, you are interested to find out all those x alpha such that f x is less than equal to alpha ok. So, suppose uh, suppose you take a point here. So, this f x is less than equal to alpha this f x is less than equal to alpha because this is this height and this is this height ok you take a point here this f x is less than equal to alpha. Now, x comma alpha x comma alpha are all those points which are on this uh, line f x uh, I mean x comma alpha so the f x is less than equal to alpha. You see if you take this x for this x f x is only only this height ok for this x f x is only this height and this f x is less than equal to alpha. If you take a point here for this x f x is only this height and alpha is this. So, f x is less than equal to alpha. So, you take if you take up all the points here on this uh, line segment here to here all other point such that f x is less than equal to alpha. Now, you vary alpha if you vary alpha if you vary alpha so, you will get you will get the line segment joining these two points such that x comma l, uh, all x alpha such that f x is less than equal to alpha. So, uh, so basically this is the entire region which represent epigraph of f you, you vary alpha if you vary alpha then you will get uh, 
all this point in the shaded region which denotes the epigraph of the function f. Now, you can easily observe that this function is convex, we can easily see okay? and the epigraph of this function is a convex set, this we can easily visualize. You see that if you take any two arbitrary point here and join the line segment, the line segment joining these two point is inside this uh, region. So, we can easily say that if a function is convex, then the epigraph of the of uh, that function is a convex set. We will discuss uh, it later on, we will prove it later on that uh, uh, if a function is convex then the epigraph of the convex function is always a convex set. Okay? So, these are the representation of epigraph. <coughs> now, next is hypograph. Uh, so, let S be a subset uh, convex set subset of R n. Then the hypograph of the function f will be given by all x alpha, x belongs to s, alpha belongs to r such that f x is greater than or equal to alpha. Here, here f x will be greater than or equal to alpha that means which region? So, for hypograph it is all x alpha such that x belongs to s, alpha belongs to r and f x is greater than or equal to alpha. So, this will be a subset of r n plus 1. So, uh, you can easily see suppose you have this curve like this. So, you take alpha here and all those all those uh, x x comma alpha such that f x is greater than or equal to alpha. So, for this we are having here because because if you take a point here okay, for this x f x will be this f x will be up to from here to here and alpha is from here to here. So, that means f x is greater than or equal to alpha. Okay. So, in this way uh, you will get uh, this line this chord joining these two point for this particular alpha. Similarly, if you vary alpha, so you will get all these all these chords joining these two points. Okay. So, the hypograph of this region will be nothing but this thing and this function is concave. So, we can easily see that if uh, we have a concave function, then the hypograph of the concave function is a convex set. Okay? So, the proof we will discuss in the next class. So, thank you very much.